So, we're live. We are live. And we're talking on Life and Balance. In today's yes. show, we're going to be talking about inflammation. Yes. <laughs> no, it's, it's a huge issue. It definitely, is. in, 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 in broad spectrums across what we do, it's very important to understand how this can affect you personally. And I can tell you personally that I've had an issue with inflammation since I was probably 30, and I'm 61 now. And it was something that was really getting out of control. I mean, you know, I would go to my doctor and he'd say, hey, take this and take that painkiller. And they were just like, you know, here's painkiller of the week or something. <laughs> and then after a while I asked him, I said, you know, aren't these painkillers going to give me some problems? And he says, yeah, well, we'll just switch them out to something else. Ah. And I said, well, why are we going to switch them out? He says, well, you build a tolerance to them so they don't work, but then they start having side effects and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm like, well... You mean side effects like it could hurt my liver? He says, oh, absolutely, yeah. That's yes. Right. <laughs> and, you know, and in your in your particular instance, you know, right. liver is kind of a, a right. big concentration a big deal for, for you, me. You know? So I said, hey, what can I do naturally? And you know what really sucked is when I asked him that, I said, well, there's really nothing you can do naturally. And I'm like. And contrary to popular belief, there's a lot you yeah. can do naturally. You know, that's what's surprising is, you know, when you talk about inflammation, there's two big things to understand. There's chronic and there's acute. Acute right. is really a good thing for your body. You right. know, that's when you get injured. It's the redness. It's the swelling, all those things. Right. That's a healing process in the body. It's very important. When it becomes chronic, that's when it's a big issue. And what you're talking about, like going on painkiller after painkiller, obviously you're in a chronic situation. Yeah. And we don't want to have that happen because that's where pain and discomfort and actually even joint malfunction can happen from that. And, and I, again, I've had arthritis for long time, I guess since my early 40s. And back then when I had the problem, it was I had a hip problem and I had a knee problem and I had to crawl up in roofs and stuff like that to run cable. And the painkillers just weren't doing it. And I read in an internet article, this is back in like 2000. Wow. Okay. Then it says, you know, if you eat ginger, ginger is good for inflammation. So I started taking like 2,000 milligrams of ginger <laughs> a day because I knew it was something I cooked with and stuff. Uh, and lo and behold, I quickly got off the painkillers. That's awesome. And, yeah. you know, and that's really it shows you a testimony right there. Yeah. of If you take small steps and just start shifting some of the habits you may have that could be promoting inflammation in your body. Yeah. And I know later on in the show we'll talk a little bit about some of the some big authors like Andrew Weil, which is a physician oh, yes. who talks about all this Phenomenal. Kind of stuff. And back then, I read several of his, like three or four of his books, and he has a, really a lot of good ideas. And I started adopting his ideas about how you eat. And eating, how you eat, has a big deal. It is a on huge your, you know, deal. On inflammation and how it happens to your body. So we're going to talk about all those kinds of things. Um, I know in your article that you wrote, you have on here, you talk about the Arthritis Foundation. You can go to their website, oh, yes. and they've got lots and lots of information in there. Definitely. But later on, I want to talk in the show also about inflammation and being overweight. That's a big issue. Because, because a lot of people don't think about that. They don't realize that when you're overweight, your body is actually making inflammation. It is making inflammation, yeah. and the reason is because your body's trying to attack that excess tissue right. to get rid of it. And so it's actually compounding or adding to, so you have the excess fat tissue that you have right. in your body, and then inflammation on top of that, which makes you look twice as big right. as the problem really is. And that's a huge issue. And if you lose the weight, you lose a lot of that inflammation. You and do. I can tell you myself, because just went through their Nutramost program, I lost 30 pounds, and by losing that 30 pounds, a lot of the aches and pains that I had, Went away. Went away. It's just like magic. It, it, it's so, amazing. No so, drugs, no nothing. No. No have to buy anything every week. No have to take <laughs> anything every day. No. And, you know, that's what's awesome about that program yeah. is it really transforms your metabolism. Yeah. So it's not where you're going to be dependent on, like, painkillers and right. anti-inflammatories for the rest of your life. You're going to actually get to a place where your body's working more effectively in all aspects. Yeah. And I know we're not talking about it today. Yeah, we're, we're, exactly. We're not going to talk about diet. We can get sidetracked kind of really quick, so we right. don't want to do that. But, but I was just going to say <laughs> that, again, diet is, is really sort of a cure that can cure lots of things. And doctors just ignore that. They, they, their idea is, you know, diet can't do anything. You know, it's amazing. We, ha uh, we have a patient that's in the office, and she recently had a surgery for something that was a pretty big issue in her life. And uh, the surgeon himself said, you know, we'll take care of this, we'll take it out, we'll do all that stuff, but really we don't know anything about nutrition, so you'll have to go find that one out on your own. And that is a major component yeah. to the strategy of making sure you're healthy. Yeah. And so and, and anti-inflammation is another huge thing because in all aspects you're going to actually create uh, a situation in the body where it's going to respond. And when your body needs healing, inflammation is part of that process. But when it becomes chronic, 
in overweight or obese conditions or in situations where you have joint fatigue and those types of things and your body's trying to heal the body, uh, you're going to have those. And it can even come down to digestion where you have poor uh, purine digestion and you create gout and those right. types of things. Um, that so I was just going to ask you about that. I mean, I remember reading about this. And I know my, my mother-in-law used to have gout. And that's a big problem for her. I mean, she just would be in immense pain. Like that. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a trigger. It just, it's like a light switch. It turns on, and then your day's plans are completely changed. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of things you can do diet-wise to stay away from that. I mean, obviously, everybody who's done any reading on that, you know, they'll always tell you stay away from the alcohol, mm -hmm. try to stay away from the red meats, and those types of things. But there's a lot of other steps that you can take. But what, what's really crazy to me, I mean, I remember talking to her about this, and she would go to the doctor, a regular doctor, and, and the doctor would just prescribe drugs. And I know, because I after that I read up on it, I said, you know, there's a lot of things you could do. Why are you taking these drugs? Because the drugs are actually have a side effect for your diabetes, which you have. Which was up, <laughs> and then you have to get on something right. else to take care of that right. side effect, and it's a galloping thing. And and you know that's that's really not where you want to go. If you're in an acute situation, you yeah. absolutely need to have that. That's what that's for. Is definitely to take care of that. But you don't want to be on this situation where you're taking that on uh, months, years, right. and that's your strategy because eventually your body will start to break down in other ways. And that's yeah, and, and, and in your article, you talk about you know the Mediterranean diet really helps that. Yes. Specific but actually, the Mediterranean diet helps lots of different kinds it of things. It does. Yeah. It can actually address well, even obesity and those types of things that we yeah. talk about, inflammation. And, and, and the problem, you know, when you talk about inflammation, a lot of people don't understand that inflammation is it's kind of like a fire going on in your body. Right. And when it gets out of control, it's called osteoarthritis. It's called yeah. rheumatoid arthritis and those types of things. And, and it could also be like autoimmune diseases yeah, too? Yeah, it can yeah. shift into that. And that's really what chronic inflammation is, is that your body trying to attack the tissues that are in your body that it feels it yeah. shouldn't be there. Right. And autoimmune is that same type of definition. When it starts to identify things as not self, it'll start to attack them. Well, I saw in here that you talk about, like in the Mediterranean diet, it talks about, you know, calcium-rich foods and low-fat dairy products, green leafy vegetables, biggie, yep. you know, calcium-fortified foods. Most people think about calcium, but they want to go grab a calcium pill. I would tell people the best place to get calcium, you told me, is green leafy vegetables, green leafy you know, vegetables. because it's, they're bioavailable. And the reality is it's yes. hard to get bioavailability out of a rock. It is. I mean, it is. You know, it's <laughs> a lot crazy. of calcium pills. I swear you could use them as like bullets or something. Go choose some gravel, right? <laughs> You know, Barney Rubble, here you go, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, you it's know, a crazy type of thing. It's crazy, but we've always talked about that when you and I have talked about it. Hit the coloring, you know, the, the bright colors of vegetables, the deep leafy greens. Right. That's where your minerals, that's where your calcium is going to be, and it's bioavailable. So what does that mean? That means that your body can take it, and it can it. absorb it, and utilize it very quickly, yeah. and there's not a lot of free radicals and oxidative stress from processing. And again, the calcium does lots of things. I mean, it, it's really good for your bones. Obviously, people know about that. But most people don't know that it actually has a really powerful piece in metabolism, f especially for, like, your muscles. Yes. And all those other kinds of things. I mean, your brain uses it for a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, you make these changes to get rid of your inflammation, and you'll see some global effects that will really benefit as well, which is really good. I saw in here it says, you know, it talks about salmon, which... When I did the diet, salmon wasn't one of mine. But I have eaten it since then, and I didn't notice any problems. So. Good, good. But I didn't eat a lot of it. I mean, I ate, yes. a, you know, I ate a handful. Yeah. Um, tuna is a biggie. Macro. Tuna. They got cheeses. Cheese and cheese probably in the middle yep. for me. Egg yolks are good. Um, and they talk about vitamin D and a whole bunch of other stuff in yeah. here. So I think if people look at the Mediterranean diet, and you can help them out with that when they come oh, in, yes. and you can show, set them up with that. That's a really, really powerful thing. But there's a whole bunch of other foods that people may not know. And I know you talk about it in your article. And yes. I, again, if you want to see the article, you go to the Vibrant Life uh, blog. Yes. And it has all that information on there. So uh, the actual address is a vibrant, Creating a Vibrant Life. And uh, if you type that in in Blogger, Blogger it'll bring it right up. Yeah. And actually, I typed it in the other day in Google search, and it came was right up at the top. Yeah. I actually typed only the first word, and it came right up at the top. Perfect. That's pretty what cool. we want, for sure. Yeah. Um, so in your in your article, you're talking about some other greens. Greens, Brussels like sprouts, and those types of things. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, uh, cabbage. Uh, I know those are what they call vesiferous, vesiferous, Yes. I have trouble saying that. <laughs> and those vegetables, I read in another book by Dr. Wow that he says that you know those things 
have like anti-cancer properties. They do have anti-cancer properties. There's some structures in there that really uh, fight carcinogens and, and actually offset your body and help yeah. it to overtake those types of things. And also those vegetables that we just mentioned are also very high in fiber. Yes. So they also help improve your digestive system, I would imagine. I yep. mean, they, I know they go through me a little faster than most of the other fruits <laughs> I eat. But I happen to really love Brussels sprouts, but so I have to deal with it. I mean, that's just the way it is. No, I do too. I love Brussels sprouts. And I like well. collard greens, although it's not listed in there. I know mm -hmm. collard greens is another one that was in there. And fatty fish. Fatty most fish. Most people don't, you know, they think fat. Ooh, bad. Actually, fatty fish is some of the best things you can eat. They are, because, you know, a lot, not all fats are bad fats. Right. You know, that's really what you got to understand is there's different types of fats, and fatty fish has a very good source of fat that your body can take and utilize for some very positive things in the body. So what would be some examples of some of the fatty fish? So we know salmon, people... Oh, you know, salmon's a very good example of that. Mackerel, sardines are another yeah. fatty fish that you can use. Uh, um, swordfish, cod, maybe, yep, would be yep, another one. or some other ones. Um, Any cold water fish really is a good good example. And what really sort of sucks, I'm from Key West. I really like the, the <laughs> warm water fish. I'm a snapper guy. Yes, a grouper snapper guy. and flounder is always yeah. his menu. <laughs> um, yellowtail. Yellowtail snapper is one of my favorites. Yes. So. Um, but you can eat those also. They don't yeah. have as much fat. That's right, the, exactly. They don't, don't have the omega-3s like... Right. You know, the salmon and so on have. Yeah. But they do have some. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, like we said, if you're really, if you're stuck in trying to figure it out, just think where it's coming from. The cold right. fish will have more fat on them because right. they have to stay warm That's as right. well. And so a cold fish, a cold water fish is a good one to use. Yeah. But I would also tell people that don't shy away from the warm water fish. <laughs> <laughs> Ma mainly because they're really lean meats. So they you're are. not going to get a lot of ironic, you know, with arachidonic acid out of them. Yeah, you know, like exactly. The stuff, the bad stuff that makes you inflammation that you get from red meat. Exactly, exactly. Right. So the fish is always good, uh, and actually that's one of my favorite foods in life. And then we got a couple of neat things like garlic, onions, and leeks. Now, I never knew what the heck of what a leek was. Ah, very I have, nice. I know our, our camera guy is a, a gourmet cook, so he knows what every kind of vegetable and things out there. Whenever you think of leeks, the first thing people usually put leeks in is eggs. Am I wrong? Everybody puts leeks in eggs. You get an omelet, you're going to have leeks in it. Okay. And I'm, I'm assuming there's some kind of little green thingies. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we'll have but to teach garlic, you more about that. But garlic I use extensively a lot. Um, and I love onions. So I to, all those things, again, when I'm cooking eggs and stuff, I'll just make an omelet, put all that stuff oh, in absolutely. there, just whoop, whoop it right down. Uh, one of the ones that my wife discovered, which is in your article, is tart cherries. Yes, tart cherries are a very big thing you can use. And after she started taking them, I said, you know, let me read up on this. And I looked, and it says it actually helps you with athletic recovery time. It does. It I does. thought that was pretty cool. So if you go run a lot... Maybe you need to be some well, you know, cherries or it, it's a it's a inflammation reducer. So you know that's one of the reasons it helps mm -hmm. with athletic recovery because your body's going through that process of acute inflammation. It's got to reduce that, yeah. so it'll help with that. It helps with gout. One of the big treatments they have is gout is tart cherries. Hit yeah. tart cherries. You no, know, it's really weird. As I remember in the '80s and '90s, all the exercise people where they would buy all the diet pills and stuff like that. And one of the primary ingredients in a lot of those diet pills was aspirin. Yes. And they were putting aspirin in it because it reduced the inflammation. <laughs> yes. Isn't that funny? <laughs> and that would be losing scale pounds on the scale, which we right. talk about. What right. are you losing? Well, a lot of that's inflammation. Yeah. The last one that we have, and this is before we hit almost the midpoint in the, in, the, in the show, is vitamin C. Yes. And vitamin C, if people are taking vitamin C, they're, they're just being sort of stupid. Because that's one of the least expensive vitamins you can get. It is. If it you is. get a high-quality one, you know, like Ester C or something mm -hmm. like that. Emergency. It's and one. it's used for a whole bunch of things in your body. I mean, it's, it's, it's involved in like hundreds of different chemical processes in your body. It is amazing what it is used yeah. for. It boosts your immune system. Yeah. Uh, and so those types of things, it really helps in a lot of aspects. And again, another great source or the most, the first source you should always use yeah. is getting those green, green leafies and getting the real source from the things that are grown in the ground. Yeah, apples. Yep. All, all your fruits almost have vitamin yes. C in them. So that's, that's something. Oranges, right. obviously. Oranges, yep. Yeah. So I know we're coming up to about uh, the halfway point. We're going to talk about the tip of the day. So the tip of the day, we're going to be talking about Vitamin D3. Yes. How, and how why is it important? Why is it important? You know, it's coming up to fall. It's September 1st. Okay. So it's fall. And so when we take a look at that, we've got to really focus and concentrate on what we're doing to get our vitamin D levels up in this off time when you're not out in the sun. We'll be right back after these words. A lot of people ask me, 
What is this Nutrimos? What is this program? You know, the amazing thing about Nutrimos is, is it a program that looks at your entire system and determines why is it that your metabolism isn't controlling fat metabolism the way that it should. There's an entire system in your body that does this, and it gets derailed, it gets off course, and when we're off course, our body starts adding the fat. We want to get away from that. We want to solve the real problem, and on this program, you actually repair that metabolism system as you go through the program. So at the end of this, program, it's not that you had, a, had a, a magical pill, a red or blue pill that made you lose the weight. It's a system and that system is running all the way through the process going forward. So we're back. We're back. Yeah, and we're going to talk about, you know, vitamin D3. Vitamin uh, D3. Tip of the week. Tip of the week, D3. You know, one of the things that we always talk about and you always hear about is, is you know, you got to have vitamin D. It boosts your immune system. It also helps a lot of different things in the body. It helps your body absorb calcium. It, it, it is, it's, a, it's an initiator for a lot of processes of the immune system. So it really helps that process. So you want to keep that level up. Um, you know, the ranges that are out there for normal or anything from 20 to 20 to 60 is what they're saying. We always like our patients really way up on the higher side of that. So you're talking about the blood levels. Blood levels. Not so how much D3. they're taking, but the blood yeah, levels. Yeah, the blood levels, you know. And, and that's, that's a different thing. Because you hear people say, take 2,000, take 5,000 yes. international units. How much you're taking is different than how much is in your blood. Exactly. And that's really, and you want to kind of you phase that in there. You know, if you're low, if you're really low, then you want to increase that right. IU, that individual unit, so that you can get that up. Uh, but but you have to you, monitor it, too. I mean, exactly. If you're not monitoring, how the hell do you know whether it is, it's the right you know, level? It is a, it, it's a fat-soluble vitamin, so it can right. build up in the body and be toxic, and right. you don't want to have that happen. Right. So when you, when you talk about that, you want to monitor it, for sure, and we can do that in the office. Um, I usually get really, blood work once a year, just so you guys know that, to monitor all these things because again as you get older you don't want problems you just you know, want to be preventative exactly <laughs> you can plan it you know and that's the other thing we talk about is when we talk about coming in the office and doing our micro and macronutrient testing right. for the blood levels that really gives you a chance to say okay what am i taking and how much of this really do i really need right. to a deficiency that i have because a lot of people they take so many different things and don't understand the concept so much that I take all of this and if I don't need it I'm really just giving the body one more thing it has to do right. which pulls the immune system even and down further. you're giving your bank account yes. one less thing to <laughs> hold for you because you're throwing money exactly. down a hole. You are and you're really because it's just passed through at that time or yeah. you know. So, so talking about vitamin D3 I remember reading a study on how they discovered that this stuff worked and they were it was in a hospital and they had two different wards and the downstairs ward People were getting the flu like it was going out of style. And the upstairs ward, people just weren't getting the flu. And the main difference between the two was they were given high doses of vitamin D3 to the ward on the second floor. Exactly. And when they discovered that that's what the difference was, then they did the double-blind studies and so on in the same hospital. And lo and behold, they discovered, and again, this was discovered like 20 right. years ago or something like and that. But people, doctors have been, again... Poo poo and you know. Oh yeah, yeah. And vitamins don't do. I remember my doctor saying, I mean, "Vitamins don't do anything." Oh, it's crazy because they like, do a lot of things in the body. Why do we eat them? Why don't we just drink water? <laughs> And here's the neat thing is this vitamin D3, I have a great source in the office. It's not expensive. I know, you know it's very It's dollars, and uh, mine's 5,000 I use. It gets you up, and I've done some studies on my own. It's been able to bring people up in their blood levels right. from uh, in, the, in the 20s to up into the 50s within a, within a year. So yeah. fantastic uh, units to, to get a hold of, or fantastic product to get a hold of in the office. Yeah. So remember, vitamin D3, that's the one you want yeah, to think, you think have, about for, for sure. sure. Um, so... We're getting into the back into anti-inflammation diets and so on like that, and a lot of people go on, online and they go to WebMD. No, WebMD is okay. Yep. But I would also tell you that it's owned by a pharmaceutical company. Just yes. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's sponsors behind it for right. sure. Um, but they they do have some good advice. They but do. I, I noticed early on when I used to use it a lot that some of the natural things that I knew about that had lots and lots of research they yanked out of there, which I would mm -hmm. thought was sort of weird. Yeah. Um, for example, I know that the Mirinda citrifolia, which is noni, okay? Yes. They took a lot of this stuff out of there, yet there's tons and tons of scientific research, double-blind studies and all that, that show that it's anti-inflammatory and all this other yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah, and you know, that when you say double-blind studies, people should really understand that is the gold standard right. of scientific <laughs> research. Right. You know, that is the most valuable you can get a hold of. That's like there's lots of double-blind studies, for example, showing that chiropractic is very, very powerful and really works. Mm -hmm. And when chiropractic is used in 
with other modalities, oh. it's even way more powerful. Way more powerful. So like using it with supplements or using it with massage or using it with just other kinds of treatments. Oh, exactly. It, it and diet. You know, when you start using diet and, and even chiropractic with anti-inflammation, it can help yeah. a great deal. When you start getting joints moving that weren't moving before, right. that joint can do a lot to clean itself out and get the body to heal more effectively, faster recovery, and those types of things. So in, in the WebMD article, they talk about, you know, different things you could do. So one of them they had on here was says, eat plenty of fruits and vegetables. Now, the reality is most people really don't eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. They don't. I mean, usually some of them will eat a lot of fruit, but no vegetables. Yes, <laughs> and, and they might like one and not the other. Right. They eat all fruit and no and, vegetables. And usually and they eat one fruit. Yes. You know, I, well, I eat apples or whatever. Instead of eating a lot of different kinds of fruit. Now, one mm -hmm. thing I'll say that's wonderful about my wife, she goes out and gets <laughs> a variety of fruits. So we got all kinds of fruits. In that. And, and one of the reasons is because my son will eat fruits. I mean, most kids don't like vegetables and fruits. Oh, yeah. But he'll wolf down fruits like they're going out of style. It's so, candy to them. Right. And he, yeah. will, he will eat vegetables if you put them on the plate, and he can't leave until he eats vegetables <laughs> on the plate. So. <laughs> but fruits and vegetables is their first suggestion. Yes. Your sec their second suggestion is right up what you always said, the omega-3s, which omega -3s. is the, the, the fatty acids from, from uh, cold water fish. Yes. Um, the next one is watch your refined carbohydrates. Now, for those of you who yes. don't know what carbohydrates are, because a lot of people, if you tell them, what's a carbohydrate, they'll say, well, that's like candy and stuff. I said, no, it's bread and, yeah. and cookies it's and the cake white stuff. And anything that's refined. Yep, it refined, you know, enriched, yeah. enriched flowers, yeah. those types of things. All that stuff yeah. is going to be, carb, you know, those carbs. You know, and, and again, pasta, which is a, what did a lot of people like to eat. Pasta, I mean, I can't, my, my, my partner knows that I can't eat a lot of pasta. Yes. I mean, it, it spikes my, my blood sugar right away. So pasta is a big one. White rice. Now, that doesn't mean you can't eat rice. There's lots of kinds of there's rice. Tons, there's yes. basmati rice. There's whole rice with the grain Jasmine. on it. Jasmine. Yeah. The more, the more it's processed, the gr faster your body can absorb it, correct? Uh, to a point. It yeah. just depends on what the processing is, you know? Yeah, I mean, well, like, for example, rice. They take the, the covers off of them. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So no, now the, you don't have... So you now don't have the fiber that, that flows... That through. Yes. Right, that, that, that through. slows yes. down the absorption of those yeah. kinds of things. So the, the, the more it's processed, the more likely it's not good for you. That's yes, the way I look that's at it. exactly, exactly. Because when they take that out, they also take all the minerals and all the vitamins yeah. and, and all the nutrients that were grown uh, into that product. Wheat is a really good example. Wheat is actually yes. very good for if you get whole wheat, but the flour has nothing in it no, it's but been, carbohydrates. It's been it's taken out. All the, <laughs> heck, salt, which is white, usually, it's white because it's essentially bleached. I mean, they've taken yes. all the minerals out of it. it. Yes. So <laughs> they've, and that's that's why everybody's going on the sea salt craze right now. It's because those things have 90 minerals in right, them. Right, right. And you we know? and our bodies need the minerals. And they're sea-based. And the minerals are used, you know, in the body for lots of different kinds of things. They're usually cofactors along with vitamins. Yeah, the peak salt we have in the office, there's 80... 80 Two of the minerals in that are essential for the body. And that's really pretty good salt, too. Uh, we we yeah. use that at my house. Um, next one is, like, eat plenty whole grains. Again, whole grains. Whole grains. You know, and some of the laws that they are out there, they allow the the labeling to be yes. cheated on quite a bit. So you need to be careful what you're looking at. I mean, if you go to a grocery store, find somebody who knows what they're talking about. A recent company <laughs> released that they are now considering, not considering, but they're changing their labeling of their products because when they say natural products, they're actually considering natural as genetically modified. Right. And natural, there's lots of labeling. I mean, if you really look at the labeling laws, remember that those labeling laws came into place through heavy lobbying. Yes. You know, yes. <laughs> paying people off or whatever. <laughs> I didn't say that word. Heavy lobbying. <laughs> yeah. And, and they could say lots of stuff. I mean, there could be rat poo in that thing, and you don't even know because it says it could have one thousandth of one percent the rat, whatever. Yep. It's, it's a natural. It's a natural product. It's a natural product. Natural flavoring. <laughs> so so your, your hamburger can have whatever in it. Yes. Okay? Yes. Um, Next one is eat lean proteins. Like yes. Chicken, for example. Chicken, fish, like fish. we talked about. Yeah, uh, definitely. It can't be red meat, but I would tell you, you know, like buffalo, I tried it. It was pretty good. It, you know, some of the red meats are very lean yeah. when you get, get to it. You know, you, you can, can get, get grass fed meats now yes. in the store. You can get, or, and they tell you how much fat's in them and all that kind of stuff. So oh, yeah. That's something that most people don't look. My wife is very good about picking those things. So I'm, oh, yeah. I'm really happy so I smart. married that woman. Um, <laughs> we're getting down to two of my favorites. So one of them is ginger, and the other one is turmeric. Yes. And 
people might know of, of some of these things by curry. If you eat curry, foods, yep, curry, you know? curry foods, and turmeric, kind of, kind of right. one, one and the same, kind right. of like bison and buffalo. Right. Yep. Same thing. So, I use turmeric and curry. I mean, turmeric and ginger extensively. Yes. And I use it probably different than most people. I mean, I literally put it in my coffee. I mean, I put it in everything. Because I know for everything I've read, there's some of the least expensive things that you can buy that are extremely healthy for you. Yeah, if you look at the, the research is unending when it comes to turmeric and curry. The, the anti-cancer properties that it has, the benefits it has with anti-inflammation in the body, um, just the, all the things that it does in the body to help your body function more effectively is amazing. Yeah. And here's a, here's a good example. Say you went to the health food store and you bought a thing of turmeric. Yes. You know, a, a, a supplements. So each pill is usually like 500 milligrams, something like that. And most people don't have any idea what 500 milligrams is. I take and open it, pour it out. And then I take my dispenser yes. that I buy at the store and I shake it next to it. And you can see how much a shake is. Yes. So if you want to get 500 milligrams, yeah, I got it. Test Oops, your shake. Yeah, and you again, do that this little bottle too. costs $3 for the shaker. Exactly. And the pills cost seven, nine, maybe 10, yep. 12. Yeah, depending on the quality. And that's still relatively inexpensive because it would be for like 90 pills or something exactly. like that. Exactly, yeah. So that's like a month and a half or two it's months worth. It's a very short step that you right. can take. But it's a very inexpensive spice that it really is. has powerful thing. and the same thing with ginger ginger is the same kind of thing you do the same thing you open the pill see how much it is get the shaker yeah now you know i just took two doses on my hamburger or whatever oh Boop. yeah yeah and you know besides the fact that ginger helps so much with inflammation it, it also helps with digestion i was gonna say that That's was one of the main issue, reasons that i noticed know? when i first started <laughs> taking it. it it actually calms your digestion so yes. when my son used to get you know upset stomach and like, that's one of the first things we reach for yeah yep it's that, ginger and peppermint yep. i would give him peppermint also yep. for exactly some reason. so in here dr wiles has suggestions for his diet and you were telling me on here you know he's got a lot of the same things omega you know fish, omega-3 omega fish, fish definitely for, there but he also had nuts you know like walnuts almonds flax seeds those yes. kinds of things and for some people, those mm -hmm. things actually work much better than the than the fish. They do because they can digest them more effectively, and so that's. that's and again, uh, I I think the point that ought to be is that people are different. Not everybody has the same genetic structure. Yes, and their metabolisms <laughs> are different. You know, a calorie for me and a calorie for you mm -hmm. are two different things. Right. How a walnut is to me is different to a walnut right. to you, and so you've really got to research and find out what works for you. Right. You know, as you trial and error this, try something for a little while, see if you get a and result. And that's that's why I think. The Nutramost diet system is really cool because it actually looks at the individual yes. from a lot of different perspectives where that way the plan is designed to really help them get rid of that unwanted fat that also causes inflammation. Exactly. And that's really what it's about. It's about yeah. getting that done. You know, and, and we've talked about that, the, the diet, you know, berries, omega-3 rich foods, antioxidant foods is what you're really looking for. Onions we've mentioned. Red grapes is another one we haven't really talked a lot about, but red grapes is another option for you. Green tea is one we haven't mentioned either. And, and just so you guys know, I generally drink lots of green tea. Um, yep. Probably about four glasses a day because you have to drink a certain amount. Yes. To get the effect. If you, you know, just drink one and you think you're being healthy, eh, that's not doing it. You know, and green tea has an effect with uh, diabetics as well. Right. It can help regulate sugar and those types of things. So there's some benefit. Turmeric we've mentioned a lot about. The other thing we've missed a lot about is berries. Berries, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. All those berries have a great anti-inflammatory component to them. I've sort of made my wife into a monster of, with, the, with the fruits because she's blueberries of the yin-yang. Yeah. Any, whatever's in season, and that's another thing. We happen to be lucky in the United States because we can get fruits from South America yes. when it's summertime down there and all that sort of stuff. We only have a couple of minutes left. I want to make sure we talk about things that maybe they shouldn't eat that can cause inflammation. You know, and that's a great in, great info into it as far as what, what shouldn't you do. Alcohol is one of those things you shouldn't uh, be doing. How about cigarettes? Cigarettes is another thing you shouldn't be doing for Oops. sure. But, you know, the other thing is sugary foods and, sure. and the drinks. This is one area you've really got to consider. What is in your drink? Because I didn't that, say that. I high, fruit, high fructose corn syrup is yeah. something you really want to stay away from here. For I mean, it promotes inflammation, and that's in. You'll find it in other things too. You'll find it in, in some of the energy drinks that are out there. Yeah, a lot Crazy. of the energy drinks have high fructose yeah. corn syrup because it's the least expensive sweetener that they can manufacture because it's not natural. Yeah. And like, people go from from the sodas, from the Pepsis and the Cokes and those types of things, over to a Monster or some energy drink, and they're kind of going from bad to bad when it comes from. Uh, an ingredient perspective. Now I got a question for you because my partner Carl likes to cook eggplant. 
Okay. So are there different, because it says right here that eggplants can be pro-inflammatory, but there's different kinds of eggplant. There is. Yeah, so there's some that you got to sweat and some that you don't have to sweat. Yes. Uh, are, they, are they all pro-inflammatory? They're not all pro-inflammatory, but you're going to have to really do some research here to find out. But ultimately, it goes back to what we were talking about. It goes down to how your body metabolizes yeah. it, and you've got to do the research. So it's going back to do a change and see how you'll give your body some time and see if you yeah. get a result. And then if that has an issue, keep Keep searching for the solutions that you have and modify your diet. Well, I know the last couple of things that he had in here in, in the article. We're talking about polyunsaturated vegetables, you know, vegetable oil, and partially hydrogenated or hydrogenated oils. Oh, Those yeah. two are bad. That's the deep frying, you know, deep frying, all that kind of stuff. Yes. Those things are. And, and again, margarine. Everybody was for the longest time. Yeah, take margarine, put lard away, and all that kind of stuff. The reality oh, yeah. is. Lard is probably not as bad as margarine. Oh, no, not at all. Okay. Not at all. Margarine. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't understand it. Margarine is actually only a few molecular s structures away from being plastic. Yeah. So <laughs> So I know, I know we're out of time here. I just want to remind everybody, definitely go to the blog and, and read the article there. Uh, share the show with your friends. I think they'll really oh, get yeah. a lot of it. Uh, next week's show, we're going to be talking about, uh, I think, uh, vitamins? Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a supplement that's actually not even really a supplement. It's a whole it's food. It's a whole food. It's okay. really exciting. So you definitely want to catch that show. Okay. Till next time, guys. You bet. Have a good one.